And by, by having that attachment to pleasure, it leads to a version of what is hard and difficult. Can you guys think of that now, looking at our world and how common that is? Um, in the end, he says, in a word, it is softness. You, we hear the word soft thrown around the military a lot. Um, you know, don't be soft, don't be weak. What does softness mean when you, if I say softness? In, in, in talking about a person, we got physical softness, right? Physical softness could be someone who just sits around the couch, doesn't work his body, lets the body deteriorate, and you touch him. That's rock hard, but you touch him, and what happens? Softness. Your finger sinks in the softness. That's physical softness. That's not, you know, something that's going to take us away from Christ or anything. But there's physical softness and there's spiritual softness. So what do you think spiritual softness would be? Easily swayed. Yep. There you go. What else? Doesn't interact with the. Yep. What do we just talk about? What is effeminacy? Uh, avoidance of what is doing hard and difficult, right? So in our spiritual life, is it is it easy to walk with Christ in today's world? It's a challenge everywhere we go. Some of us are in great communities. We have great families. We have great um, communities around us. A great church, great school. Or maybe it's a little easier. It's a little easier to walk with Christ. It's a little easier to live out your faith. That's not going to be the case for much longer, for the, especially you guys who are getting into college age or those who want to go in the military. It'll probably be a wake-up call. Uh, I'm sure your parents will prepare you appropriately for it, but it's a wake-up call when you get into the world where walking with Christ is not the norm. Um, and it's, it's punch the face sometimes, but it challenges you, and it's a very good opportunity for you to be an example to those around you. So, effeminacy, as defined by Thomas Aquinas, is essentially pleasure is my world, hard, arduous, difficult tasks, I don't want any part of it. Um, so, um, what is, what do you think uh, we need to practice? in order to get away from the softness and that kind of feminacy type stuff. You guys know, like, hey, we got a vice, we counteract that with the opposite virtue, right? So, you know, pick a, pick a vice. I don't want to pick a vice. Pride. Pride. How do we, how do we counteract pride? Humility. Humility. Opposite. What's another vice? Courage. But courage is a good thing. It's a virtue. Oh. What's another vice? Fear. Fear. And we counteract it with? Courage. Courage. Gluttony. We counteract it with? Uh, sharing. Fasting. Self-control. Moderation. Self-control. Moderation. So, softness, we counteract it with? Strength. Grit. Yeah, grit. Doing things that are hard. What you guys have just done the past 24 hours, is it easy? It's hard, right? So that physical softness, that mental softness, that spiritual softness, you counteract it with doing things that are hard. Physically hard? Okay, if you have physical softness and you're flabby and soft, you know, you want to maintain your body and you do physical things to work out, to exercise, and you get your body hard and tough. Mental soft, mental softness. Yeah, I'm not going to read a book tonight, a good book that, you know, is about a great leader in World War II because I just want to sit back and watch TV. We counteract that with, hey, I'm going to pick this book up and I'm going to learn. I'm going to take some notes. Mental, mental softness. Do something that's hard. Mental toughness. Spiritual softness. You know, church, prayer, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm tired. Or, you know, I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and, and pray. Alarm goes off, hit snooze button. Alarm goes off again, snooze button. All of a sudden, I got to get up and go to school. I could have had 20 minutes to say some prayers in the morning and read the Bible. And now it's gone. So that's a combination of kind of mental toughness, spiritual toughness, and physical toughness. Does that make sense? So effeminacy, pleasure, that's what I want. Hard, arduous, difficult, no thanks. Effeminacy is what leads to impurity. We'll get into that a little bit. But effeminacy 
by not having control of yourself, not not wanting to do difficult, hard, hard arduous things, that sets you set yourselves up to be impure, because the temptations start coming in, and that's where we get we get smacked in the face, and Satan gets a hold of us. Um, so, what are some other signs of effeminacy? What can you think of? Someone who's effeminate. Um, if you think about what we just talked about, the definition. What are some signs of effeminacy? Sluggishness. Yeah, there you go. What else? They take the easy way out. Easy way, definitely. <coughs> Lack of self-control. Yep. Lack of discipline. Yep, very good. What about whining and complaining? Whining and complaining, we all do it. It's very natural for us to kind of go down that route if we're not getting the kind of fulfillment out of stuff that we want or what we think we need. We often confuse desires with needs. So we think we need something. It's really just a want or a desire. And we complain that we don't have it. Um, any other ideas of what are some signs of feminacy? Effeminacy. Sorry, I got to say it a little slower. Um, need for approval. So we're all individuals. God created us. We got a mission in life. We have great examples of people around us. But we like to he we like that pat on the back. We heard Justin talking about it last night. You know, he was doing great things in his military career, helping a lot of people, saving a lot of people, and he liked getting those awards in the, in, the, in in you know presenting the awards. It's a pat on the back. And you kind of feel like you got it going on. Or, hey, we do something and we want someone to come comment on how, good, how, how well we did. Again, humility, need for approval, need for people to come up and say, hey, great job, and counteract with humility. So if we're constantly seeking approval from people, that's a sign of feminism. Um, complying, agreeing, talking here about um, there's a, a, a conversation going on with your friends going down the wrong path. They start talking about things they shouldn't be, whether it's impure stuff or just dirty jokes, nasty stuff. And you start laughing along with it because you don't want to say, hey guys, let's knock it off. No reason to talk about this. Well, if those are just bad friends you, you shouldn't be hanging out with, you know, just, just cut it off or try and influence them. But just kind of, you know it's wrong. You feel that kind of awkwardness in, inside you. And you, don't, you don't say anything. You just comply and agree with what they're saying and kind of laugh at it. Signs of effeminacy. Because again, it's easy and pleasurable to kind of sit back and let the world around you fall down, go down the wrong path. And it's difficult to do that difficult thing and say it to your friends sometimes. Um, hours of video games, TV. I mean, that's a, that's a very common thing amongst the male generation. Um, and also now we talk about phones, like the phone is in your hand. If there's a man, a young man, and someone takes away his phone and he starts whining, complaining, crying, getting angry, that's a big sign of effeminacy. You know, you talk about today's worldview of, of, of tough man, big guy, works out, women love him. You take away his phone for 15 minutes and he throws a little fit. Big sign of feminism. Um, sloth, laziness, you guys kind of mentioned that. So those are some kind of um, signs of, of feminism. There's plenty of other ones down there. The big thing is we're seeking pleasure. So if we're constantly seeking pleasure, what kind of fulfillment are we going to get? Temporary. Temporary, yeah. Any, any, nothing long-lasting, right? When we constantly seek pleasure, is it going to give us happiness? True happiness, not at all. What it does, it manifests itself in depression and addictions. If we're constantly seeking pleasure, if we just go down this path, hey, I love TV, I'm gonna sit there and watch TV. How long is that gonna fulfill you? For as long as you watch it. Yeah, you're gonna have to keep on changing up shows. We do things repetitively and it's not going to be something that fill even temporary pleasure. So we got to change it up. Okay, what's more exciting? Well, now I'm going to watch a bunch of violent TV. 
I'm gonna go down that. Maybe it turns into, hey, I'm gonna try and find some pornography and, and watch pornography and go down this. And it turns into an addiction, right? Video games, same kind of thing. So when we're constantly seeking pleasure, it takes us down a path where we lose our self-control, addictions start coming out, and it's gonna eventually lead to depression because nothing's gonna fulfill you. I mean, I've heard numerous talks of, of guys who've been addicted to pornography, and they started when they were young, and it got more and more severe and completely addicted, and they got to the point where no, there was nothing that gave them any kind of temporary pleasure because they had seen everything, they had, they, had, they had been through every stage of that, and they went into depression, and that's what happens with addictions. So effeminacy, constantly seeking pleasure, it leads you down the road towards addictions, and then it manifests itself in depression. So just be aware of that. Um, you guys may have friends who are kind of going down those paths. Help them out. That's what we got to do. You guys know the truth. You help them out with that. Um, so um, I talked about effeminacy leads to impurity. You guys kind of seen how that can happen now? We seek the pleasure. We avoid the hard work. We avoid the arduous tasks. It can lead to impurity. What are what are ways that that young men are impure? Speech. Speech. There you go. Thoughts. Thoughts. Thoughts yep. So we get our mind right. We can have like a lot of bad things go on in our mind. What else do we have? That we got five of these special things that humans have. Senses. Senses. What are our five senses? Sight, taste, smell, hearing, and touch. Very good. So our senses, those can lead us down the wrong path. Every single one of those. St. John Chrysostom, he spoke about the five senses. And he said, think of your five senses as entryways into a very like special fortress. You need to put guards at each of these entryways or something's going to come in. Satan's going to find a way in there. Temptation's going to find your way in there. So, sight. What kind of guard do we need to put on for our sight in today's world? Self-control. Self-control. Hey, a buddy's watching something on his little phone. People are gathering around there. You go over, it's something wrong. Pornography, it's something dirty, nasty. That's our sight. we got to guard it. we got to know where our weaknesses are. Taste. What guard we put up on the taste? What, what's, a, what's a vice that comes from taste? Gluttony. Gluttony, right? Hey, I can eat this, this thing all day long. I'm going to get that ice, pack of ice cream bars and just chow them all down one time. Oh. Put up that guard. 